Hello, hello, Burn. How are you? Good, good, my friend. Good, good. <laughs> look at your, look at me. Look at your father. <laughs> this look at me. This episode was, was another good one. Another. <laughs> <laughs> I did like that throwback in this episode. Hello, everybody. This is the bodacious rant with Burn and Rye. You know, we were, you know, talking a little Thor humor. Uh, but right before, we were also talking about a, a new conspiracy in Big Auto with Fast and Furious. But that's not here and there. We'll get to that in that review. We'll get to that later, yeah. We'll break the whole oh, thing down. Oh, oh dear God. <laughs> um, so, yeah, today let's talk about Loki Episode 3, which was definitely a, a, another solid episode. A mm-hmm. um, bit of a detour from, you know, the events of the last two. Like, it just kind of, like... We thought it was going one way, took a complete, you know, right turn or left turn, however you want to look at it. Um, but a great episode nonetheless. I think this is my favorite one, visually speaking, so far. If I mean, I don't know what you thought, Burn. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess uh, I'll, I'll agree with you there. I think all of the episodes so far have been pretty visually striking. But this one, uh, definitely, where, where it played uh, around in the world of uh, Lamentis is where the, our characters end up in. And yeah, just visually, you know, having this world be in an apocalypse and look like this beautiful is kind of like reminds me of a little bit of Mad Max. Not necessarily, you know, the colors, obviously, but just sort of like how everything's desolate, but it just looks visually striking. I actually got more of a Prometheus feel a little bit, but the yeah, epicness of Mad too. Max, I, but the epicness of Mad Max, I could totally see because Prometheus is like. It's epic, but not Mad Max epic. It's a different thing. Anyways, mm-hmm. um, the beginning was definitely different. Ladies and gentlemen, also, before I keep going, um, this is a spoiler episode. We're just jumping right into it. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely give it a quick watch. You know, Loki has been, you know, decently short episode um, season so far. It's only about like 40 minutes. So check it out and come on back and, uh, you know, dissect this with us. But yes. that dream sequence with that uh, that time hunter, the the I don't remember the character's name. Um, you know, Sasha Lane, the actress. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was really cool. That was really weird. I thought it was a whole, you know, weird simulation thing that uh, Lady Loki, aka Sylvie, was just kind of setting up for the character. And it, I kind of like how it plays into it later, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I, I thought that was a really cool thing to kind of get an idea of what Sylvie is doing when she enchants or, or uh, takes control of these people. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree that that part was uh, was pretty cool. And then when we get the revelation later on, it you know re- totally recontextualizes that whole scene, which I thought upon rewatch is really cool to watch. But uh, but yeah, I, I do like um, that this this you know Loki at you know Sylvie it does have a, a different power set, and we get to explore that a little bit more. And I thought we we got to see a lot of that in this episode, especially. Yeah, I really like diving more into the Sylvie's, you know, not only abilities, but a little bit of her backstory. And I'm loving Sylvie right now. I, I definitely want uh, I want a whole series of her right now, like separate from, you know, the Loki we have. The main Loki versus the the uh, the cooler Loki, essentially, if that makes sense. Yeah, the, the Sylvie variant. Yes, of course. Yeah, I mean, uh, from what I've seen in this episode so far, she is, she is a very interesting character. And I would, you know... I mean, we don't know how the show ends, obviously, but hopefully mm-hmm. there's something where, you know, her story can be continued on. But we'll see about that in uh... <laughs> the book of Sylvie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> now they're just now they're getting ridiculous. But anyways, um, yeah, like I said, the Lamentous one, that, that whole setting, like another. I kind of like how they keep going to the apocalypse thing. Like there definitely wasn't a a one-off thing from the last episode. Mm-hmm. I like how they kind of accidentally jumped into this and it's two planets crashing in together. And she's like, this is the worst place you could have picked. <laughs> yeah. And, out of all the apocalypses you could have picked. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes sense just because like, okay, anyone could try and get away from like a tsunami an earthquake, something of that nature. This was two planets crashing together, literally Armageddon, no matter yeah, where you go. Global <laughs> extermination. Just, yeah, no, there's no one getting out of it ever. Yeah, so I thought that was really cool. And then as the episode goes on, they're, they kind of have to work together to get out of there. I, I really like them diving into each other's past. Like when they have to hop on a train, I like them asking like, oh, like what was your, like, you know, where'd you learn your power? So I'm like, I taught myself. What about you? My mom taught me. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, I didn't know my mom. Like I, I thought it was, it's like they are supposed to be like variants of each other. 
and that's what that's that's kind of where the similarity stops like they've to- totally had different experiences i thought that was a uh, kind of it was very well done i think in this episode yeah very much so i mean they, they are almost complete total opposites like it, it, like you know in terms of just like you know their looks visually and then just their their whole backstories that they they go into or like you said where they had completely different upbringings and it's really interesting to see you know how that changes like it could be the same person but you know just all these little differences throughout your life make you like totally totally different you know at, at the end of the day which is Really, really cool that I'm, I'm like that they're uh, exploring that with these two characters in particular. And their back and forth is just really fun. You know, ha- them going through this, you know, a- apocalyptic uh, environment and constantly trying to outwit each other. <laughs> Whether it was like, oh, how do you do this? Oh, well, I'm not going to tell you because you're going to try to use that against me because I know you because you're me. <laughs> you know, it's, just like, it's like a whole chess match. Like It's like playing chess against yourself. It, it, was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, it's almost like therapy with yourself like how they're diving into each other's lives like and then how yeah she knew she was adopted like wait what they told you they told you yeah Yeah, didn't they with you well no it's like oh and her face was perfect like oh that explains a lot about you right now (laughs) (laughs) and and i kind of and i i low-key did oh my god no, (laughs) no pun intended but i did like the fact that they both were asking like oh any anybody waiting for you she's like yeah some you know a postman in one apocalypse that you know keeps me going what about you any princes any like princesses or princes and he's like yeah some i was like oh interesting like that was kind of cool to confirm you know loki's by um Mm -hmm. without making like such a big deal out of it's like oh just casual conversation i thought that's a little bit better than making some like big thing out of it you know what i mean because i feel like a lot of shows are doing that now and at this point, it's like it's getting a little too repetitive. I thought this was like a great way to introduce that, if that makes sense. Well, I mean, it's it's cool that they they finally went out and just said it. You know, Disney. It seems like they've they've sort of, uh, for lack of a better term, like queer baited, where they they would say like, oh, you know, this character is you know is this you know sexual orientation or you know like this sexual preference, and it's like. Oh well, the, the the character never comes out and says it. It's always like they they imply it, but they never go out and, and write it and say it. And now they kind of like Captain Marvel. They definitely dance around that character, whether she was you know and bi and or Valkyrie or too, and and uh, and Thor yeah. Ragnarok, where you know the actresses you know will will say something, and you know that doesn't really come across blatantly. So it's like it's like they're they're trying to have their cake and eat it too, where they don't want to offend you know uh, people who would be offended by there being a gay character in the, in you know the movie and I'm, now I like that they just said no yep the, the Loki likes both men and women <laughs> and then you double, boom there it is so like deal with it yeah don't bother me you know I, I don't care you know <laughs> to each their own but um, like I said the setting was very interesting this time around just because I didn't really understand like I guess get the gravity of the apocalypse situation like when they went to Pompeii I thought it was funnier than anything and but now that they're both in the situation both Sylvie and Loki it was like wow this really sucks like it sucks to be like those kind of people I don't know I was just, I just really like how it flipped that situation for them where they're now they're in the danger of the apocalypse instead of just being able to leave I thought it made it way more exciting and like way more intense especially near the end yeah yeah definitely and then i like when they then they do get on the train to try to get on this arc you know that's gonna you know take all essentially all the rich people of this planet off off you know planet to to save them it, it gave me a lot of like a uh, snow piercer vibes where oh know, that's it i was thinking about i was like wait what does this remind me of i can't think about it but yeah or like or like snow elysium piercer. too um where Ooh. it's like a whole little like commentary on class and stuff so i thought that was a kind of cool little uh, parallel or like a little homage to that yeah, and then the one thing that threw me off is like near the end of the episode where they're trying to get to the Ark, the the ship that takes them off planet. Uh, the, the building's about to fall, and Loki's like, "I got this," and he just he uses his mind. I don't know that. Uh, what the hell? Do you know what that meant? Like, what does that mean? Answer. Like, I need something. I need I need proof. I don't know. <laughs> he's, just, uh, he's using his power. I, I, I thought it was really cool. Uh, <laughs> seeing Loki get to use his powers a little bit more in in this uh, in this show so far, and that one was like a a pretty big jump from what we've seen <laughs> so far. You know, being able to take essentially a giant yes. falling building and just set it back like 
That's what I'm saying. It totally threw me for a loop. I was like, what? No <laughs> way he can do that. Like, it was just, it just was crazy. Um, but I'm trying to think. What else? I guess the only other thing besides, like, you know, the visuals and then diving into, like, Sylvia and, like, Loki a little bit more, like, they're, they're back and forth, was just the fact that the timekeepers are a bunch of liars. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> it was kind of like one of those things where everybody kind of suspected like you know you have this organization that uh, essentially is controlling a timeline it's like yeah you, you, you're probably not the best of <laughs> of people <laughs> to be honest i mean i didn't think about that until now oh really <laughs> Just, I, I, I mean i mean they, they, they had like, been kind of hinting uh especially in last episode mm-hmm. that there, there's kind of something a little bit off about the tva or the the timekeepers um when you know that scene that we talked about um where uh, more uh, Mobius and uh, yeah. and uh, Ravona and Ravona were talking in the, yeah, in her office. Yeah, so yeah there, there's I something mean... a little bit off, but the the whole revelation that the the TVA agents are are variants <laughs> was kind of like, oh, I I I didn't see that part coming. No, I thought that was really well done. But again, I should have picked up on that in the beginning when the girl, um, when like Sylvie's talking to that you know other timekeeper or the time hunter, whatever. And she's like, oh, I love these drinks. Like, I haven't been here in ages. It's like, wait, what? I thought all you guys were just basically, like, working for the TVA your whole lives kind of thing. Or you were created for that. And even Loki was like, wait, what? And I and I really liked how it ended off where, is, is he going to try and, like, re- make Mobius realize this? Does Mobius know and doesn't care? Like, I'm very curious to where that it's going to go from with that revelation, you know? Yeah, like, who exactly is, is in, the, in the know of this whole situation? Because they're essentially mind white, which we got from uh, that, that one character who, who didn't know what a fish was, <laughs> you know? So so it's like, yeah. you know, just how aware are, are, are the, the, you know, the workers of the TVA of this whole this whole thing essentially i'm very like i said it was i I mean i wouldn't say it's as much of a cliffhanger as the last one but at the same time uh the their little uh time box the the what is it do you remember what it's called the the 10 pad the 10 pad thank you that's destroyed the arc destroyed right in their faces like they're screwed i'm i don't know where they're gonna go from this one but um, yeah, and, yeah like and they're in in an apocalypse, so there's no way that the TVA can even see them. You know, like they're they're hiding in an apocalypse, so what, if they do anything, it's gonna get wiped out anyway. So there's no way of knowing that they're even there. Yeah, but I mean that's that's all I got for this one. I mean, like I said, it was it's I really like I said those are my fa- favorite moments just because this was definitely not where I was expecting it to go at all. Um, anything else that stood out to you, Burn? Like maybe any like. Um, Easter eggs or anything? No, um, just just basically the same uh, things that you touched on. You know, the visuals were great. You know, the delving more deeply into these two different uh, variants is is great. You know, the the whole confirmation of, of Loki's sexuality, awesome for for the people that you know can really relate to that. And and yeah, they're just the the cliffhanger of okay. I mean, this episode didn't really progress much plot wise, but we got to learn a little bit more about the characters. So the way it ended, I'm excited to see how they get out of this situation. Yeah, I mean, well, again, we have to wait another sadly another week for it to to be out, but it'll be here before we know it. Uh, like I said, guys, if there's anything you you know picked up on it, um, you know, or what you guys didn't like about this episode, let us know in the comments. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you guys next week for Loki episode four, and also Fast Nine is coming out this week, so that'll be something for us to review. Will I actually like it? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll be all. I will be amazed if I like it. To be honest, let's, let's be honest. <laughs> we will let you know <laughs> for sure. <laughs> all right, man. I'll talk to you later, my brother. All right, man. I'll see you on the next one. Deuces. <laughs>